Hello everyone and welcome to our series, Great Ones. But today, well, before we're going to discuss players, we're going to discuss a tournament. Maybe the greatest tournaments ever, if not, well, definitely one of the greatest tournaments ever. And this is the Avro 1938 tournament in Netherlands. Well, first of all, this Avro... You know, today we have, uh, what we have, Facebook, Google, all those uh, things. Uh, those are the ones that I know. This Instagram, Snapchat, I don't even really know what they are. But many years ago, almost 80 years ago, well, Avro was the high-tech company of the world, the broadcasting company, Radio One. Well, that was a long time ago, but it was, the tournament was sponsored by this company. It was actually played in many different uh, cities over Holland, Netherlands, from Amsterdam to Haag, Rotterdam, Groningen, and other cities. So the players really traveled, really traveled uh, a lot uh, while playing uh, this tournament. But now to, for the chess part. So the tournament itself, okay, featured four world champions, two previous ones, Capablanca and Oiva. The, f the current world champion, Alekine, future world champion, Botvinnik, players that were either number two or number one in the world, or at least very decent world championship contenders or world championship uh, world champions material. Keres, amazingly enough, finished in the candidates four times in the second spot. He was ranked, according to, to Chess Matrix, 52 times over a period of 17 years, from 1943 till 1960, he was ranked number two in the world. Amazingly, apparently number one was impossible for him. Very, quite a sad figure in chess in that sense that he never played a world championship match. Ruben Fine was ranked number one in the world a little bit between 1939 and 1940. Amazingly strong player that, well, quit chess to, you know, he was a psychology professor, wrote some of the greatest chess books. Reshevsky, the same as Ruben Fine from America, was a super child prodigy, decent world champion, a contender, and the, and Salo Flor from the Czech Republic, which was in the early 30s, a very decent world champion contender. This is really an historic, historical tournament. And when thinking about this, just one more minute before we get to chess. I was thinking, why this tournament is so different than, okay, let's say London Classic. Okay, we have, I don't know, Anand, Kramny, Carlson, Caruana, those players playing. I think because, at least to my feeling and my understanding, you know, Anand and Kramny, yes, they are great players, but can you say a part of period of history that they were extremely dominant I cannot. I mean, yes, they were at some point maybe tiny bit better than each other. Don't forget Topalov. Don't forget others. They were not Capablanca. They are not Alekhine. They are not Botvinnik at his peak. I mean, yeah, Oiva was maybe at that regard. You know, uh, Yermo liked to say a lot that Botvinnik said about himself, uh, uh, first among equal. Well, yes, but for a big part, Botvinnik was really, really the st by far the strongest player in the world. And this is what I think makes this tournament so amazing. It is like having Kasparov, Karpov, Fischer and Carlsen, something like that in one tournament. Well, history didn't see many tournaments at all such as this. So really amazing tournament that the idea was that the winner of this tournament will be the contender for the world championship. It was official, but those were the thoughts. Well, we know that in 1939, World War II started and every all, all plans went to the toilet. But Vinik, which finished third in this tournament after the World War, was without any doubt the strongest player in the world and indeed won the World Championship tournament in 1948. As you remember, Alekhine died 